So let's spend a little time talking about exactly what is relationship marketing. There are three views on what relationship marketing might be. First, some people view relationship marketing as a management philosophy in which the company's goals can be achieved through the identification and satisfaction of customers' wants and needs. So this is a business philosophy of, of we're going to focus on customer satisfaction and our job is to have satisfied, happy customers who then remain loyal to our organization. Sort of a second view of relationship marketing is more strategic and tactical. And it views relationship marketing as a strategy about getting to know your customers, understanding their needs, and then building relationships with, with them by providing the best, most suitable products and enhanced customer service based on what they prefer. And then finally, for some people, the notion of relationship marketing is based on it being a computerized system for identifying, targeting, acquiring, and retaining the best mix of customers. It's this last view that tends to cause confusion. And that's because you don't really need to have a computerized system or even a, a marketing database in place to focus on relationship marketing. Many small businesses rely on their ability to build relationships with customers to survive, but they might not even have a computerized system in place. They may have a Rolodex, as we talked about previously, but they are not running their business, their small business, based on a computerized system. For many business executives, the notion of CRM is what is, 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 is what we refer to when we talk about the computer program and system that's in place to facilitate the use of relationship marketing strategies. So I have a, defin a definition of relationship marketing from 1994 showing you how far back the notion of relationship marketing goes and how it really hasn't changed much. Back then, relationship marketing refers to a marketing activities that are aimed at developing and managing trusting and long-term relationships with larger customers. Of course, that really means building relationship with your best customers. In practice, we tend to prefer to, to view relationship marketing and, and, and customer relationship management as the art and science of acquiring and retaining profitable customers. For traditional marketers that don't use a database, the definition of relationship marketing changes a little bit. It, it usually sounds something like this. Relationship marketing is a strategy designed to foster customer loyalty and interaction and long-term engagement. It is designed to develop strong connections with customers by providing them with information directly suited to their needs, interests, and by promoting open communication. Now you'll notice here that the thing that makes this a little bit different for traditional marketers is it says nothing about best customers. And that's because if you don't have a database in place, you really can't identify who your best customers are. So, if you look at the relationship marketing definitions, and there are lots and lots and lots of them, there are some common themes. First, relationship marketing focuses on building a bond with customers. It is critical to engage customers and to build strong bonds with them over time. Relationship marketing focuses on customer more on customer retention than customer acquisition. That is, the, there is a shift in effort and a shift in um, resource allocation towards retention rather than acquisition. You have to understand that you always have to go out and acquire new customers. But it's also important to retain the ones you already have. Third, the goal is to increase profitability. The whole point behind relationship marketing is, is that it is a business strategy and a business philosophy that is designed to increase the profitability. 
by acquiring and retaining profitable customers. So relationship marketing then focuses on customer loyalty and long-term customer engagement. It is a focus on creating strong, even emotional customer connections with a brand. And hopefully that will lead to loyalty, free positive word of mouth, and even information from customers that can generate leads and help us to do a better job of satisfying customers. Relationship marketing uh, stands in contrast to the, the more traditional transactional marketing approach, which focuses more on creating sales than building relationships. Of course, this is a song from Rogers and Hammerstein's um, by Rogers and Hammerstein from the um, movie and play The King and I. Now you'll notice here that there is some interesting lyrics. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you and hoping that you like me. That's really what relationship marketing is all about. Getting to know you, putting it my way, but nicely, you are precisely my cup of tea. Getting to know what to say. So when it comes to building relationships and relationship marketing, it turns out that the firm doesn't want relationships with every customer. In fact, some customers are bad customers. Pick customers that are, worst, that are worth the most to you. And by the way, most firms find that anywhere between 20 to 40% of their customers are not profitable. And this might be because small customers may not be worth it due to diseconomies of scale. Large customers may not be worth it due to demands for greater service and lower prices. And that is large customers are often very demanding and in fact require lots of service and lots of uh, maybe price um, cuts. Medium sized customers might be the best or maybe not. But the fact is that you don't want relationships with all customers only the customers that you have identified as the most profitable. Now, the flip side of this is not all customers want a relationship with your organization. And I was reminded of this, uh, a, a, one of my early mentors, a guy by the name of Don Schultz from Northwestern University, passed away recently, and he used to always say this, not all customers want a relationship with your organization. And so it's a waste of time to try to build relationships with them. Let me give you a couple of really quick examples. Um, the water district keeps sending me information in newsletters and all kinds of um, uh, information, and they want to build a relationship with me. They want me to be a, become a big supporter of the water district. They want me to tell people that the water district is being run fantastically and that the... Um, the water district is a is a wonderful organization. The same thing with NV Energy. NV Energy wants to build a relationship with me. They do the same thing. They send me newsletters and all sorts of other communications. It turns out that I don't want a relationship with either of those organizations. Why not? Well, the fact is that they want me to help them to build their reputation and their brand in the community. But what's in it for me? The answer, of course, is nothing. They're not going to give me a, a discounted uh, price on water. They're not going to give me better water. They're not going to give me more water. And the, elect and the electrical company is the same way. They're not going to give me any free power. And in fact, one of the former CEOs when NV Energy was Nevada Power was a, was a 
a friend of mine that I grew up with, um, you know, a, a, a million years ago. And, and, you know, and even Steve never said, gee, Jack, if you just call me, I'll, I'll um, you know, I'll knock a little something off your power bill. That's not the way the relationship works. And the problem, of course, is that for there to be a, a motivation for individuals to build a relationship with organizations, there must be some value in it for the customer. That is, the relationship must be mutually beneficial. All right, another thing about relationship marketing, you must identify the key customers meriting relationship management. That is, you have to identify who your key or best customers are. Well, how do you make this happen? Of course, the only real way to make this happen is with an individual level purchase data driven database. And once you have that information, you can get back to that one on one marketing strategy and, and perspective that Pepperidge and Rogers talk about. 